Welcome back to another Mecha PPV on the Forerunner. Of course, we're not done with the Forerunner yet. <laughs> so let's uh, we start off this day by changing the gear fluid on the transmission. I couldn't sleep one night and I kept thinking about, you know what? I've been driving this truck with little to no gear fluid, oil, whatever you want to call it, in the drivetrain. And I did put a little bit in there, but it wasn't at the right spec. So I was, I was saying to myself, look, I need to check those things. And I'm glad I did because barely anything came out of those those drain plugs like barely anything here check this one out check this one out watch just wait 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 for it wait for it look how much oil that's it <laughs> there was nothing in there I couldn't believe it um, <laughs> so I, I've been hauling it hauling butt in the highway and everything and this thing barely has any oil <laughs> gear oil uh, none, not only that uh, the last person who decided to do their last gear oil change was uh, was really uh, really put those drain plugs and uh, fill plugs really tight I had to use you saw the cheater wrenches I call them cheater wrenches <laughs> to give me some more leverage leverage is your friend ladies and gentlemen if something can't come out get some more leverage when I mean leverage is Put a cheater bar on there. Put something on there, and uh, get it loose. Don't fight it. You don't want to round those stuff off. Trust me. Here's a transfer case. That one was actually loose. So props to the last person who did that. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. This one's a weight 75 weight. I think if I see the bottle that's reading correctly, yeah, that's 75 weight. Can't remember was the first one. I. I I think it was 85, 90, 90, 85, somewhere right there. I don't know. Um, I usually research this stuff when I'm doing the job, but I'm really forgetful. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so I finished doing that. I pumped enough fluids in, in the drivetrain and decided to give my, my runner a little facelift. Uh, the truck that I got the donor engine harness and ECU from, I took the front grill. And I said I was gonna put it on this front, and I, and and I ended up really liking the look. It, it looks a little bit different. I really, uh, I really don't like the original Forerunner one. I do have it in the container, but it just doesn't call my attention for some reason. So on top of the engine, there's the PCV uh, hose, positive crankcase ventilation hose that I didn't never put put on and this is kind of like a breather hose because the p the actual pcv valve is in the back it's that brownish looking hose that you see there this is like a breather it's just I, I don't know why this engine in particular has it maybe it builds up a lot of pressure i don't know but uh, i just decided to put some random hose in there as long as it does the job transfer the that that asthma, that that pressure uh to the intake i think it'll, it'll do the job so here I am doing something very important. I am cleaning the throttle body. If you have any old engine, uh, preferably I th it should be like 2005 and lower. Anything that's Toyota should have a throttle body, uh, electronic throttle body that requires you to clean it. The newer style throttle bodies, I advise you to not clean them because they're they're the just the electronics and the sensors that are built in in there. They hate brake fluid, they hate carb cleaner, they hate all that clean agent stuff. Uh, don't do it on the new stuff, trust me when I say this. Don't do it on the new stuff. Old stuff, yes. Take it apart and uh, take the, the idle screw out, all the hoses, uh, and just directly put brake clean in those things. This one, all I have to worry about is the throttle, uh, throttle positioning sensor. And other than that, it's all good. Newer stuff, they have more, it's more involved. So just think about that. So what, it, what is this gonna do? It's definitely gonna bring my idols up. It's gonna breathe better. It's gonna suck in better. It's gonna do all kinds of stuff. And not only that, the idle screw will be, it will need minimal adjusting. 
Uh, think about that for a second. The idle scroll will need minimal adjusting. So you'll see that later what I, why I say that. Um, putting it all back together and I just do it real quick. Done it several times. Quick 12s, four of them. Easy. You can do this at home in your driveway, anywhere. It's just so easy to, to work on these trucks, this engine in particular. So I decided to take apart the airbox on the airbox. I never took it apart. It's all old and rusty and come to find out I got a brand new air filter. Look at that. I don't know who did that, but it's brand new. It's not even dirty. Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> I was planning to replace that thing. Good thing I checked. Here's the air ducts, the duct work quickly, easy, no issues. Nothing to it, ladies and gentlemen, nothing to it. All right, guys, I've been messing with this stuff all day and I finally got it to purr like a kitten. You hear that? Look at this. I told you that it was gonna be purring like a kid when I'm done with it. I did a lot of adjustments. Sorry if it's a little bit foggy. I did a lot of adjustments, all right? I messed with the cable a little bit. It's almost has some slack. That's where you want it. I also adjusted the idle screw. The idle screw is all the way in right now. That's good. That's very good. I cleaned the throttle body thoroughly, inside and out. I put, I cleaned out the carbon that was in there. I sprayed some brake clean right in that hole, make sure that it was all right. Um, also, I had a big vacuum leak. I wasn't very bright. I stuck right here on on the intake. You can't see it right now, but I had a a big old gap, and I had a. I had this thing right here that was right in between the gasket and the int and be right between the half of the intake and gasket. That was causing a big massive leak and it was whining really, really loud. It was all that rush of vacuum or a rush of air that was being sucked in there. Finally, I got that pinpointed. I was able to pinpoint it really fast with the brake clean. I sprayed some brake clean and the, the idle went up really fast. So that's a good, good tip. I added a O2 sensor with the heater circuit. Basically, this truck was wired up with the single wire O2 sensor. I look up the schematics. This was the 88 ECU engine and harness that I put. The engine harness was all from 88. The 88 was not a single wire. It was a four wire O2 sensor. So I was able to look up the schematics and get that wiring correct. I was like, it was perfect. I looked up where it connected to the ECU. Uh, and I got some, uh, I, got, I pointed out some other battery positives that I needed for that O2 sensor. And I could, I could still use the O2 sensor single wire within that circuit. So that was a good, that was a good thing. And that thing is working perfectly. To give you a quick reference, right now it's idling at a 750. That's where I want it at. I don't want it below that because I kind of feel like it's a little bit sluggish like that. But a 750 was the ideal uh, point that I wanted to put it on. Uh, when I started it, it was over about 1100. Brought it all the way down. It's already at operating temperature. I haven't adjusted the timing yet, but we'll see if I adjust the timing or not. But I have the distributor maybe close to the middle, but more to the right. Maybe about, I can't I can't tell you what what is the right amount for that, but I got it almost close to the middle. Uh, the next thing is, is just put the battery on there the battery what the heck the front bumper which I have it on the truck and we're gonna slap that thing on there that thing weighs a ton so I'm gonna I'm gonna have my I'm gonna have my Bobby James over here help me out you know what I'm saying so this thing I told you I was gonna get it I was gonna get it it looked janky at first I know but I got it you know what I'm saying hell yeah 
So at the very end of the day, we ended up not successfully putting on this super heavy bumper. Uh, not only would it not align correctly, I did get, it, I, actually I take that back, I, I did get to a point to align it, but I just need a new hardware, a new bolt, so we ended up not putting it in and calling it a day, so, oh well, next time, right, next time. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, hope you liked the footage, uh, stay tuned, this runner is definitely not done, here's some old videos, go check them out if you haven't checked them out. I have some clips where it's not running and some clips that it is running and I gave you a, a first person view test drive. Go check those out and I see you on the next one. Later.